reminders uh, for those of us joining us. Just joining us, we are going to be placing students on mute during our presentation. And do not worry, uh, you'll be seeing a copy of this presentation along with the PowerPoint uh, by tomorrow. So let's go on and move forward with our presentation from Sabrina Valencia. Thank you, Eddie. California Intercontinental University is personable, accessible, and has an entrepreneurial spirit. Here you'll see all 50 states highlighted in blue. This represents our current and graduate students. We move up to Alaska and also down to Hawaii. You'll then see our international student population represented by countries highlighted in red. CIU is accessible to many countries like India, those in Africa, <laughs> South America, Mexico, and also Canada. As we return to the United States of America, we'll breeze over to the west coast of California, all the way to Orange County. CIU is located at 17310 Red Hill Avenue, Suite 200 in Irvine, California. If ever you're in the area, we'd love to be honored to give you a university tour and put a face to your name. From all of us to you, welcome to CIU. Thank you, Sabrina. All right, everybody, we're going to go and move forward with our uh, presentation today. Ready, set, go. In our ready section today, we're reviewing the student portal, the Learn Center, the course, uh, course room, e-textbook, and the APA format. Are we set? In our set section, we review a tutorial technology requirements, and registration. And go, go section, we'll be, we'll be reviewing attendance, the intelligent partnership, assistance and support, study partner, and a student ID card. Ready, so let's move on to our next section. First section, excuse me. All right, curtains away. Login student portal. So what you're seeing on your screen here is a snapshot of our login uh, credentials. Login screen, excuse me, where you will input your credentials. Your username and password were created during the application's process and will remain the same. So reminders, the username is the first letter of your first name and the first two letters of your last name. The password is created during the application process. Now, don't worry if you forgot your username, forgot your password. You can select forgot your password listed here on the login screen. Or you can also email the help desk at caluniversity.edu. Or, of course, you can contact your advisor for a password reset. If you've been enrolled, uh, you will also, if you've been enrolled already, excuse me, uh, you will uh, have your uh, Login credentials already created. You can log into the student portal prior to your start date in August. Um, so, a reminder: if you have any questions regarding your student portal, as you mentioned, you can select the following support items as well. You can contact your advisor. Student portal administrative headquarters. Well, you're seeing on your screen the snapshot of your student portal. As I mentioned, if you've been enrolled as well already. Um, you will have access to the following screen, which will be reviewed in our tutorial uh, as well. We'll go into detail in our tutorial each of these sections in the student portal. For example, under forms and official forms, listed here are our, our official forms here at California Conti University, uh, including our leave of absence request form, for release authorization, request for official transcript, grade appeal form, academic honesty statement, our SAP policy, our satisfactory academic progress, and also a student ID card request. 
which we'll review in our presentation later today. So that is official forms in the student portal. What you're seeing here on your screen is the Learn Center, the course study room. Now the Learn Center is separate in the student portal. You will have access on, in the Learn Center on the first day of class. But prior to the start of your class, you only have access to your student portal. So what you're seeing here is the home screen of the Learn Center. You'll know in the right spot, as you can see, it asks you what time is it. Reminder that the official time zone for California College University is U.S. Pacific time zone. Of course, we're located in California, and all assignment due dates reflect that time zone. So please plan accordingly to submit your work on time. We're doing that in detail in our tutorial today. Ready, virtual course room. What you're seeing here is a snapshot of the MKT 517 marketing course. You can see, um, includes two orientation highlights, news forum, welcome message, and our general discussion forum, and a syllabus. And we'll discuss if those items are tutorial. But a reminder, uh, we, will actually, we will also have the textbooks in our course room listed on the first day of class. I've highlighted that section here as well. Let's now talk about the e-textbook, which will be embedded and available on your first day of class. E-textbook. What you're seeing on your screen is a snapshot of the table of contents for one of our courses. Um, so you'll have access fully to this course on the first day of class, and it also includes offline reading, uh, which is supported on your devices, such as iPads and other compatible devices. Um, so it's very important that once you log in on the first day of class that you create an account with the Vital Source Bookshelf. Listed here is our web, the Vital Source Bookshelf website, and this a link for support as well. Vital Source has also their, their um, support, IT support link, and they're very helpful to ensure that if you ever have any questions with the ebook, you can utilize Vital Source's support systems as well on their website. So ensure, and your reminder, that on the first day of the class, create a vital source uh, username and password and create your account. APA format. The APA format stands for American Psychological Association. Standard uh, standard for um, research articles and papers uh, and across many universities, what you're seeing here is a snapshot of the APA format. And in our tutorial today, we're reviewing the APA uh, template. Um, so if this is your first time utilizing the APA format in your papers, I want to reassure all of you, do not worry. In our tutorial today, in your first course, we'll be learning more about the APA format uh, as well and be very successful. Um, so we'll do that in our tutorial today, and prior to your start date, of course, you have any questions. We can help and assist you in answering any questions regarding the American Psychological Association, American Psychological Association APA format. Do not worry. All right. Well, that concludes our ready section. So what I'm going to do now is unmute everybody. and open up our Q&A before we, um, before we begin with our set section. So please, if you have questions, um, utilize our chat box. You can talk in the, your microphone or your phone um, before we get started with the next section. Reminder, you can use the chat box as well if you have any questions. You can answer those live. All right. Well, that concludes our ready section. I'm now going to turn it over to David Rodriguez, who will be completing the set section uh, as well as our tutorial today. All right, everyone. Well, good morning and happy Monday to you. I hope we can give you a little bit more energy so that you guys can get excited for your first day of class here. So now that you are ready, let's get you set with our tutorial. There you go, like the drums. <laughs> So we're going to go over the tutorial. Eddie went over the pages that we're going to look at. Now we're actually going to 
go into the website and see what that actually looks like. So this is a screenshot uh, that Eddie showed you. This is the administrative headquarters or your portal. Your account here, we don't have access to this, so make sure that you review this. Some of the important tabs that I recommend that you view is under academics. Review your degree audit. So what courses am I uh, have to take? How many, how many units? How many courses? How am I scheduled? Your class schedule will be found here. GPA, make sure uh, that undergrads maintain a 2.0, grads maintain a 3.0. Your grades, very important. Always check your grades. Make sure that you're up to date with that. Any information on proctored exams. My profile, this is a very important tab because we are not a brick and mortar school. We're an online institution. With that being said, the way that we communicate with you is through the information that we have here in our system, which means that you may need to make sure that we have all of your information always up to date, your phone numbers, your address, uh, anything, any emails, of course, very important. Make sure they're updated because that's how we contact you. Uh, we want to make sure that we communicate any important messaging that goes out to you, any Maybe, maybe perhaps any surprises in your, in your mailboxes, you know, who knows? Make sure that this is always updated. Now, one thing I did want to remind you is that if you ever request for us to change your password, always go to my profile once you log in and change your password. This is very important because we want to make sure that we keep the, your information private. Under your finances tab, view your account information. You can always make a payment to and view your payment information. And when it comes for that time to view your 1098 key form, you can also view a PDF form here. Under the documents, you have there's a lot of documents sent here with a lot of great information, um, supplemental documents that you can view. However, forms that pertain to you are the official forms here under form tab. As I mentioned, we have the leave of absence request form, purple form if you want uh, share if you want us to be able to share your personal information to somebody else. This is where you will be able to retrieve that document. And lastly, go to Learn Center link. There's a link here and there's a link here. But let's say, let's go back to the home page. Now we're to review the forms. It's the first day of class. I'm so excited. Where do I go? I logged in successfully to the administrative headquarters. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on the Go to Learn Center here, the upper right hand corner. You're going to click on the Go to Learn Center. It's going to prompt you to the second page where you'll see a picture of a campus. And down below, you'll see a second link again, Go to Learn Center. Now, if you click on this link and nothing happens, make sure that you are disabling your pop-up blockers or add the caluniversity.edu domain as a trusted site. If you don't do that and you try to click on Go to Learn Center, guess what? Nothing's going to pop up. So make sure that you're reading your directions, instructions, and disable your pop-up blockers. Once you do that, you click on Go to Learn Center, and it's going to prompt you to the home page, Learn Center, with a big red question, what time is it? So why is this important and irrelevant to you? Well, the official time zone for CIU activities is U.S. Pacific time. Hence, this clock, red clock there, is set up for the PST time. So it is 10, 17 a.m. But so extended time this morning today. So make sure that you're aware of that. So once you log into the Learn Center, there's a the menu up on top. You're going to select My Courses, and you'll be able to view your course. You will be, as I mentioned, you are registered automatically into your first class here. So you'll find your first course here. So for the purpose of this presentation, what we did is we opened up a course for you. This is a Marketing 517 Courses, the first course for the MBA program. Let's see here. Um, I'm not sure if Edwin or Mariah or what's her third guest uh, is an MBA student or Rebecca, but we do. This is a, a an MBA course. Um, um, so we're going to be reviewing it. Your courses, they will all mostly have a, a similar layout. However, keep in mind that um, it'll have the same information, maybe just in different locations. So the first thing you'll see on the marketing class, this is an NKT 517 marketing course, you'll be able to find the student orientation highlights. So in case you want to review some of the things that we talked about in the student affairs, make sure that you review the student orientation highlights. Now, some of the things that I want to cover before we actually look into your, your course and what that looks like, I do want to mention to you that this program is designed to be flexible. So you are able to work at your own pace and time. 
and the courses available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Although you have the, the availability to review your courses at any time, you will have weekly assignments due each week. So make sure that you're reviewing your units. All right, so now with that being said, let's go down to what you will find in your course. News and forums. So news and forums are just a lot of great information that your instructor will provide to you. A welcome message from your instructor and a general discussion forum. Under the course is textbook. Textbook and important documents, you'll be able to retrieve your marketing marketing syllabi or your personal syllabi. This is very important to review as it's an important course information to understand the flow and the expectations of the class. So make sure that you do review your syllabi. Instructor information. There is an instructor that you will be working with Hence, you need to make sure that any questions you, ha you have regarding your course, assignments, uh, any questions regarding specific assignments or follow-up questions on any of the um, information in the unit, follow up with your instructor, uh, and just remind your students that there is a 24 to 48 hour turnaround feedback time. So if you send an email and you're already you know, upset because the instructor's taking a day, keep in mind that instructors also are working with other students, so keep that in mind, ask your questions early in the week to receive your, your, um, your feedback. Textbook. The textbooks are all embedded into your course. Remember the green puzzle piece. New students, you will have to create an account with, with Vital Source Bookshelf. All you need to do is select this green puzzle piece link here. It's going to open up a new tab. Again, you will have to uh, enable your pop-up blockers. And then, or disable them actually. And you will have to put in your email address. It will prompt you to some, just fill in some, some questionnaire, and you'll have access to your textbooks. And you will have, uh, you will be able to read the books offline with your mobile and desktop uh, apps. So keep that in mind as well. Grammarly. Grammarly is such an amazing, amazing tool. I use it all the time. Uh, it's been developed by top scholars. It's just a, it's a writing enhancement platform that assists you with proofreading, with plagiarism detection, and assists you with scholarly writing. It helps you just write better, more comprehensively, and it just eliminates unnecessary verbiage. I use it all the time here uh, at work. So this is a free resource for you students. I recommend that you use it. All you need to do is select the Grammarly student login and create an account with them. Under APA style template, this is what it was mentioned to you, the APA, if it's something new to you, uh, click on the APA, retrieve that APA template so that you know what to do, select the APA 6 style sample with instructions. This APA template will have all the instructions tell you what you need to do, what is required, how you're supposed to set up your document, and even just fill in. So make sure that you utilize all the information that we have here for you. So that's the Word document while it opens up. Uh, we're going to keep going. We're on time crunch. All right, so now we're going to get to the important things in your course, your assignments. So each of your course is six weeks, and each of the weeks is a unit. So for example, unit one pertains to week one. Everything you find in unit one will have to be completed by the end of Sunday. So each unit begins on a Monday, ends on a Sunday. That's completed, then you go on to your next unit. So let's open up the unit here for Marketing one, uh, marketing 517, and you'll find all the activities. The first activity that you'll find is your biography statement. Now, this is very important for new students and continuing students because you're inputting your biography statement. So maybe your biography statement just tells us, I'm here, I'm present, I'm excited, and I'm committed to my education. Not only that, but this is a business school, an entrepreneur spirit. So start making those networking, you know, start networking with your classmates, start building those relationships, you know, pair up, make a study buddy, and start getting to know each other. So make sure that you put your bargain statement on the first day of class. It is due by 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, keep in mind, too, that this is an informal assignment, so don't worry about, you know, making sure that it's APA formatting or anything like that. It's informal. It's just introducing yourself. Um, I'm going back to this because I was waiting for it to open up, but this is what the APA template looks like. I just wanted you to know and be aware that it's in there for you so that you can review. So you can retrieve that. So 
So going back to unit one. So this is your biography statement. Make sure you submit this on the first day of class. It's very important. Get to know your peers and get to know your instructor. But you need uh, the CLOs. This is what you will be. This is the learning outcomes of this class. So if you do want to know what you're going to be learning, these are the CLOs as we like to call them. Under your activity number one is your reading assignment. So what am I supposed to read this week? For this week, students are required to read your chapter one and your chapter two. And to assist you in staying on track, we do have a unit one lecture. So this unit one lecture just follows, you can follow along with the reading assignments and this will help you stay on track. Your voting activity. So we want to make sure that your virtual classrooms are interactive. So we also include multimedia like videos. Um, we have some sounds. So for this activity, we have a voting activity that has a YouTube video. So you're going to review this video and you're going to make your vote. Moving down into your unit one section is your discussion questions. Now, a lot of students always ask, how do I get participation points? For every course that you are in, in every week, you will have a discussion question. This discussion question is placed by your instructor. You will respond to the discussion question, and then you will respond to two classmates. Some courses have more than one discussion question, but you need to keep in mind that participation will be required every week. And the discussion question will pertain to any of the activities or any of the reading assignments. So that's going to be weekly. Activity number three is your submission. It's your assignment. So for this class, the students will be required to submit an introduction to a marketing plan. Make sure that you read fully the instructions. Make sure that you read the minimum pages requirement and how you're supposed to be submitting. All the assignments are in APA form formatting, which means that they include a cover page and reference page. So if it says two page minimum, that's two pages of content, plus your cover page, plus your reference page. So that'd be a total of four. So let's say I've completed my assignments. I get a little check mark here. I get a little check mark here. And then you're done for that week. And then you can go on and proceed to unit two. So if it's Saturday, you've completed all of your assignments, you've completed your discussion questions, you've responded to your, your classmates, and you've completed everything, that means you're done. You can start working ahead, or you can go on to your unit two um, activities. And this is unit two. And the same thing, the same flow, you will review, you get everything done, and then you go on to your next course, uh, to your unit, next unit. Once you complete this, unit three, and so on and so forth. So everything is in here for you, it's in there for you. That's the great part of CIU and their courses is that you actually have the entire coursework for you on the first day of class. So you can definitely work ahead if you know that you have to do some business travel, so you have a busy week. You know, schedule yourself, start working ahead if you can. However, again, keep in mind that we do track attendance per week. So this is your virtual classroom. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little glimpse of what that would look like. Once you have access on your first day of class, make sure you get more acquainted to that. The next thing I'm going to cover is the online library, or the LIRN. This is the Library and Information Resource Network. And here you'll find the databases that are available to you to conduct your research. Some instructors may ask you for specific vendors. So for example, if they ask for you know, EBSCO, you can go to Vendor View here, or ProQuest. And if they say, let's say, Kelsey Engage Educated Reference Complete or something like that, it's just an uh, easier way for you to track those um, databases. If you would like to attend some of the trainings, uh, you can select the training tab here, select the calendar date, and attend one of the workshops. So this is the LIRN. And this is available to you again 24 hours a day, seven days a week. OK. All right, the next thing I'm going to be covering is the Student Resource Center. The Student Resource Center is open to the entire student body and has a lot of great information. And the news and features, this is a place to post news and share achievements. So a lot of uh, your, your fellow classmates that are in different uh, programs can also share information here. Make sure that you review it. Maybe some of your, your questions that you have uh, are answered by other classmates. Under academic information, you can view your student handbook. 
New York CIU book list. So we do provide you the uh, electronic uh, version of your textbook. However, some students rather have the actual physical book. If you would like to uh, retrieve the ISBN number for your books in the future, you can go ahead and look at the CIU book list. Confirm, check with your student advisor, make sure the CIU book list is updated so that you can uh, receive the accurate uh, book information. But this is a resource for you. You'll, receive, you'll be able to view a lot of supplemental material like PowerPoint presentations, more APA formatting tools, great on. It's more supplemental material for you. Uh, one of the important things for, um, for students is the VeriSight plagiarism scanner. And the reason why this tool is very important is because your submissions will be scanned automatically once you submit to your instructor. We, we have a university policy that requires students to have less than 15% of plagiarism detection in their submissions. So to ensure that you have less than 15, you can type up your document and submit it to the plagiar VeriSight plagiarism scanner, which will give you a percentage, it'll scan your document, it'll give you a report, it will highlight the sections that it may find detected some plagiarism, patch writing or um, not giving the references or giving credit to the author, whatever the case may be, and it'll give you a percentage Based on that, let's say you get 16%, it'll give you the report. You can go out back to your document, make edits, you know, review it, and then resubmit it again. So this is for you to utilize as a student. This is not submitting to your instructor. Uh, utilize this, uh, this tool because it, it, it makes sure that you have less than 15% because you will get points deducted if you do have over 15% or your instructor may not even grade it. Uh, so to, keep, to make sure that you do, um, uh, have less than 50% use this scanner. Very, very helpful. Now, for those students that may be terrified of math, algebra, we do have the Algebra Math and Tutoring Center. This is the director of the math and lab, uh, math and uh, tutor lab is uh, Iris Chow, and she reviews this with you. She will also be able to uh, help you. You can request to review Iris Chow here. Again, keep in mind the 24 to 48 hours review response time frame. So um, if you do have a question for, for Iris Chow on any math problems, make sure that you submit them early in the week. And um, you can also schedule a time for you to speak to her directly. So that's a great resource for you. Keep that in mind. Utilize um, Iris Chow for any assistance. She specializes in business math, pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, and word problems. So if you're not alone, we're here to help you. In addition to that, Math Lab, we also have the Writing Center. So let's say that maybe your writing is not your forte. Well, guess what? We also have the Writing Center here for you. You can also submit a request to Iris Chow or Jillian Benyon. And you can also make an appointment with her. Again, keep in mind the 24, hour, 24 to 40 hour time frame confirm early in the week, I mean early in the week to get your assignments back on time. But they're also here to help you. We have all the resources here available to you to make sure that you are successful in the program. And lastly, this is an online institution. We know that IT problems can happen. One of the things that you can do to get help is clicking on the technical support here and open up a new ticket. You can check the status of the ticket by just putting the email and the ticket number. So that pretty much covers up and sums up our, our uh, tutorial. I know there's a lot of more information that we did not cover, but keep in mind that uh, we're on a time constraint here. However, once you have access to your course, navigate, get yourself acquainted to the Learn Center, ask questions. Do know that you have the entire CIU um, team here to support you and ensure that you are successful. All right, so we're going to go back here to our presentation. Um, Actually, we're going to move forward with uh, the next slides, actually. Technology required 1.0. All right. So what do I need to ensure that I'm successful in the course? Well, of course, you need a reliable internet connection. We recommend using Google Chrome. We also highly recommend that you do have Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, Adobe Acrobat Reader, webcam, microphone, or external headsets, for in addition to that technical um, submission of that request that I showed you guys in the Learn Center, you can actually also send an email directly to helpdesk at caluniversity.edu. 
and they'll receive a support ticket uh, for you, and they will also be able to help, help you there. So there's various ways for you to communicate to IT. There's a little computer here. Course registration. So there are eight terms or eight courses in one year, and each course is six weeks. During the first week of this term, you will be able to adjust your schedule by adding or dropping your course. Make sure that you document those changes in the first week. Send an email, call your instructor, submit the documents, the appropriate documentation, but do that during the first week of each term. Please contact your student advice for any possible changes in your schedule before or during week one. All schedule changes must be done week one per university policy. So Serena G. Valencia is a student advisor, however, Eddie and myself are here to assist you as well. Keep in mind, you will reach out to her uh, for doing that first week. For detailed information, please see the catalog, and here's the catalog link. You can also find the catalog in our, our website, <coughs> university website. All right, well, that wraps up our set segment. We went over our tutorial, our technology requirements, and our registration. I'm going to open it up for any questions that you may have here. Um, we also have uh, Rebecca here. Uh, Rebecca, any feedback since you have previous experience with your course? Any no, feedback? Everything looks great. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Well, uh, any questions from uh, anybody that's online? You can also use the chat box if you have any questions. All right, well, I wish you good luck. Welcome again to CIU. We're so excited to have you. And then Eddie's going to be wrapping up with the Go section. Thank you, David. Kind of reminder, we are going to be recording of this presentation today. So don't worry. I know the tutorial was very detailed. Excellent. You'll reference it as we begin the program. So that's why I want to ensure that you have that available to you. Uh, but now it is the first day of the term. So we'll be now going in the Go section. All right, attendance, very important. So you've seen how you can log in and post. But let's now talk more about attendance. So in red, flashing on our screen, reminder, participation, completion of your weekly units are required in your courses. So it's very important that we um, first begin by submitting your biography statement on the first day of class. Very important, and will confirm your attendance. A reminder that, as we indicated here, there are weekly units, every course, Every program has weekly assignments at every level. So it's important that, as David reads in the tutorial, you read your syllabus and plan out your week so you can complete each assignment before midnight. And the reason is there's a few items you do want to address, especially for new students. One is that if there's non-participation week one, it will result in your cancellation. So please be aware of that uh, as well. We'll be following up with you if there are concerns um, with your attendance in week one. Uh, unit assignments will be for completion Sunday of each week on 11 55 p.m. Pacific time. So, reminder that if you are doing assignments, it's late Sunday night. Remember, that's the deadline. So, in triple or midnight, plan ahead before 11 55, you're already posting your assignments. And remember, of course, we're in California, so it's reflecting the Pacific time zone. Students may be withdrawn after 14 consecutive days of non attendance. So after 14 days, you are in violation of our attendance policy. So it's critical that you do follow up with us. If you have concerns, um, we have login questions. Um, we have concerns of impacting your attendance and your assignments. Please contact your student service advisor. Contact your faculty, your instructor. We're here to help you. We do not want you to be in violation of our, of our withdrawal policy and want to help you to continue on your path to success. So contact us, all of us here. We're here to help you. The Intelligent Partnership. So I'm very excited to bring to your attention Pocket Confident AI. Pocket Confident AI and CIU have joined forces to be in a unique partnership. Think about how we build the future of digital education, boost student engagement and achievement. We're off with this uh, Pocket Confident is a virtual coaching tool to all students, faculty, and staff. This self-coaching system helps for the individual step back, excuse me, step back, reflect, become more aware of their situation, 
and facilitates conversations for personal performance. Of all students, faculty and staff will be given access to Pocket and Confident amid the term. Uh, I personally have, have, have utilized Pocket Confident and, uh, er, from my previous term, and it's very, very helpful, very a new tool. Um, so once you have access to this tool, when you start, I encourage you to utilize that as well. Uh, we want your feedback and, and your success in utilizing this tool. Um, don't be a lot of it being an assignment. It's not an assignment, it's an extra tool. So for more information, um, you'll be, we have included in our PowerPoint presentation today a, a README document, which will have more information, and a blog for further detail. Um, so this is a great tool, and we're excited for you to have Pocket Confidant in our, next, in our upcoming term. Don't worry, more information is forthcoming. Assistance and support. As I mentioned in a previous slide, we're all here to help you. And uh, you can contact your, of course, you can contact your instructor via email or phone, locate an instructor information form. Uh, you can also submit a help ticket to tech support via email helpdesk.cowuniversity.edu um, uh, as well. And of course, we're available for advising, scheduling, and program changes, and additional support. Listed here are all of our contact information. Uh, myself, Eduardo Hernandez, David Rodriguez, who spoke earlier today, Sabrina Jean Valencia, your student uh, service advisor for our term six, uh, Dee Jefferson, our student affairs manager, and also for any transcript or scheduled question, you can contact Gina Borelli. She is our transcript evaluator and assistant registrar for help. We're all here to, to assist and support you. Don't be, af don't be uh, afraid to call us. We're all here to help you. If you're wondering what to do, give us a call. It's okay. We're, we'll work as a team to ensure and guide you through graduation. All right, study partner. Um, so we look forward to providing uh, quality online education that you value for your family and friends. Um, so we, one of the benefits of working with somebody online is that you can share ideas, accountability, build confidence, additional support, gain new perspectives, and learn new study skills. I can encourage, I can encourage you, um, I have many stories, of encouraging stories of graduates who have and then they completed their programs along with a spouse, a family member, a colleague, a friend at work. Um, so we want to help everybody achieve their goals. And our, and our term approaches in August, um, ensure that you can contact us in the Office of Student Affairs, and we can discuss those goals with your fellow family member or friend um, as well. So as you begin your program, get a study partner. It's very helpful. CIU School ID. Um, so, very excited. Once you get started in our program, CIU students are eligible to receive an identification card upon the successful completion of the first course. Please submit your picture with the white background to OSA at caluniversity.edu. OSA is the Office of Student Affairs. You get your discounts at the movie theater. There are a lot of companies who offer discounts with student identification. And it's great. You shop your pride to you your family and friends here at CIU. So complete your first course and get your student ID card. All right, everybody, we're near the completion of our orientation today. Ready, set, go. Um, so today we reviewed in our ready section, the student portal, learn center, course room, e-textbook, and the APA format. So you'll be ready. You're gonna be set. We reviewed today the tutorial, technology requirements, and registration. Go. In the Go section, we reviewed attendance, the intelligent partnership, assistance and support, study partner and ID, and the student ID card, which you'll receive when you complete your first class. So that concludes our orientation. But before we do that, um, we're going to now discuss our CIU mission pillars. 
uh, as well. Our pillars are personable, accessible, and entrepreneurial spirit. Our support uh, is service-oriented culture uh, amongst uh, students, faculty, and alumni. Our accessible support is attainable, global, affordable, and online. Entrepreneurial spirit support is independent, evolving, driven, and relevant. Our personal tone is supportive and encouraging. Uh, accessible, our accessible tone is practical and straightforward. And our entrepreneurial spirit tone is aspirational and challenging. So thank you for uh, selecting CIU for your educational goals. These are our mission, our CIU mission pillars, what which we are, are important to your success and our support to your success. All right, um, our orientation has ended, and all students will receive the PowerPoint presentation and the recording of this group orientation. I'm moving up our GoToMeeting app. Um, and a reminder, of course, use the chat box for questions. Thank you again for joining the CIU New Student Orientation. Congratulations. And we're now going to open up the forum for everyone to have questions before we conclude. It's about 10.45. We have time to answer your questions. So please go away. Um, please go ahead and start question. questions. Do not go away. I'm sorry. Do not go away. Uh, ask questions as well. Go ahead is what I meant to say. Uh, it's Monday. So we're already <laughs> getting started. Um, but uh, please do so if you have any questions regarding your orientation uh, or the program. Uh, or anything we can discuss, please do so now. Um, in attending today, um, we have myself and uh, Dee Jefferson, also our manager of student affairs, available to ask questions. All right, first question. Edwin, can I finish a course ahead of time? The answer is yes, you can. So if you saw the tutorial, you can work ahead. Um, finish assignments earlier in the week or earlier in the term. That's fine uh, as well. Um, so one, thing, one recommendation would be if you do attend earlier, let us know, especially if it's about a week earlier. Maybe in some classes you may finish earlier, some may not, but let us know. But that's one of the goals we have here is that you schedule your own time um, during the six weeks to complete the assignments accordingly. And one thing I'd like to add, uh, new students, if you do want to finish ahead of time, which is awesome, be sure to continue your required reading of your chapters, uh, your syllabus, and study guide as you move along quickly. That will help you keep on track with all your subject matter. So awesome question. Thank you, Dee. That's an excellent point. Uh, Ed, Edwin, yeah, I see a, a question regarding our 14-day non-attendance policy. Okay, that's a, good, that's a good point. So 14 days, you finish two weeks earlier. I will say this, that's pretty rare. That's, that's good, but you may want to Consider reviewing, going back to your assignments uh, as well. If you're finishing that early, um, I would advise you if you are finishing that early that review your assignments accordingly before you submit them. Probably don't work more than a week ahead uh, as well. You will not be penalized if you don't attend if you finish early, but let us know. Um, that's very that's very important um, as well. I understand, Edwin, you are in the doctorate program. So um, I will say this, in our graduate program, MBA and DBA level, very rarely do students work that ahead. There are still weekly discussion forums that are to be completed. Um, so be aware of that. If you're working too far ahead, you may want to slow down a little bit and ensure that you are on track and have feedback from your instructors before doing that. All right, we have a question from Mariah Peters. With participation, however, how is it possible to finish ahead of time? Discussions are still required. Yes, yeah, so that's a good point. So we do have weekly discussion forums that are required during the week. You can answer those questions earlier, but you made a great point, Mariah, because you also are required to respond to your fellow classmates during the week. So yes, you can finish maybe your exams early, maybe write an assignment early, but you are correct. You can, you are some courses actually, including actually, you know what? Every course has discussion forum questions and has um, part, part of their curriculum answering to your fellow classmates. So you want, if you work too far ahead, you're not able to do that and may not receive credit for the discussion credits. So that's why it's very important that you're still aware of our syllabus 
and ensure of what is, uh, what is necessary for your participation. It's good to work ahead, we encourage that, but ensure that you're on top of every area of your assignment is completed. Uh, okay. Very good point, Eddie. Another thing I'd like to say, uh, Ms. Peters, is that it's great to work ahead, yeah. once again, just piggybacking backing off of uh, Mr. Eduardo here. But another thing is that some instructors have a different schedule for posting mm -hmm. uh, the discussion questions. So you might want to refer uh, very delicately to your syllabus. Uh, some instructors want you to post on specific days of the week and then finish up. So just be aware of those little nuances. But otherwise, absolutely, we do encourage early submission. Thank you, Dee. That's a great point. Uh, always, always go back to your syllabus. So if you're finishing, too er finishing earlier, you want to go back and ensure you, you, you complete each assignment accordingly, correctly, by the assignment deadline, and have met all the requirements you are submitting. Always, always, I said a few times, review the syllabus. That is, like, that is your key to your success here at CIU and to completing your course successfully. Are there any additional questions? Anything we can discuss today uh, as well, either regarding your enrollment or the program we did review today in orientation? We gladly answer that in Paul's on your behalf. All right. Well, I guess that concludes our orientation today. We're finishing a little earlier than usual, but thank you again for joining us. If there are any questions after our presentation today, you can contact um, Office of Student Affairs. Um, we saw our names listed, and of course, to Blaine, uh, some of you may have already uh, spoken to. Uh, thank you again for joining us. We have another presentation today at 2.30, if you'd like to join. Uh, but we will see you uh, next month and at the start of our program. Congratulations. And thank you again for joining us. I hope you have an excellent Monday, an excellent week, and we'll see you, all of you, very soon. Have a great day and take care.